Hello art stars and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at creating our own landscapes from our imagination and we're going to focus mainly on colour and how colour can be used to evoke different moods and also how we can convey different textures and marks in the painting and map out different areas using different textures and paints and patterns and how we can um, form our own language so that people looking at our work can get a feel of of what we're thinking um, for example textures of grass or hay um, and textures on the ground and how we can convey them in different ways so I'm just going to put my camera down and show you some pictures so colors are really big important thing for us today um, using different colors and like I say what mood they evoke so I've got some um, pictures some examples of other landscapes which I've done now this one is one from our imagination like I say but we can take inspiration from elsewhere but I just wanted to show you a few different ones so we can have a look and discuss the different moods or the colours have created. So, for example, we've got uh, this one. This was an example of Van Gogh's Starry Night picture. So this is a replica or an example that's taking inspiration from that. <clears throat> and you can see um, this picture, Van Gogh's picture, was an Impressionist picture. So I've done lots of little lines and dots for the stars. Um, this is to give the impression of a dreamlike effect. Um, and movement of the wind there and it's in quite bright colors lots of greens and pinks so I feel from looking at this my take on it is it's quite uplifting quite bright quite fresh whereas we look at this one those of you that have been doing the art stars for a little while will remember this one from last year this is done using acrylics and dry food some of the dry foods have fallen off now so it's a slightly different process but it's for me it feels a bit more sinister there's lots of dark colors lots of blacks lots of grays it feels quite manic there's a lot going on in the background here but i find the dark colors really give it a different feel to this one so we can already see when we're replicating or taking inspiration from the same picture once we add different colors what a difference that can make um here's one this was inspired from this way up this was inspired from um one of monet's paintings so it's the bridge over the water lilies and this was done in watercolors and it's quite muted colors quite watered down so it gives us quite a tranquil serene kind of dreamlike effect and plus there's a few bright reds on there and yellows just to stand out and make the picture pop a little bit or this one this is an abstract landscape where we can just make out um areas of land and trees so yeah it's a little bit abstract and using complementary colors so blue and orange are complementary colors they're colors which are opposite each other on the color wheel um, which clash but look really good together so fashion designers interior designers and artists use them together uh, when creating artwork so that's another option using colors which are complementary which go together i'll give you some examples so Blue and orange, that's my favourite pair. Purple and yellow and green and red or green and pink look very good together. So using these colours which really work nicely together. And here's an example I made for today's class from my imagination. So it's, it's quite a simple landscape to draw. It's just the hills um, and then paying attention to the textures and focuses, a focus on the hills and the detail that will go on them and specifically the colour. So we can see the sky here. I've dabbed on some red paint and then dabbed on some yellow over the top. It looks almost to me a bit unsettling, a bit uncomfortable. It gives us a feeling of heat or, or fire or um, not, not a tranquil picture, something quite alarming almost and then I've put on one wash of paint so one layer of color and when it's dried gone over the top 
with another layer of that colour or a slightly different one. And this is, for example, these little lines here to me are quite reminiscent of grass. So we're not doing it to look like grass, to look realistic, but to give the viewer the impression of maybe there being grass and greenery there, um, different haystacks. Sometimes when we're using red, it can give us an idea about the season, red and yellow, maybe being autumn. And also using complementary colours as well. So greens and pinks. And we've got the orangey, reddy sky and lots of blue on there as well. Um, and what I'd like to do today, I'm going to replicate this or do something similar, take inspiration from it. And then I'm going to colour it differently so I'm going to see how it looks with different colours so what feel do I get from it if there's or do we get from it if there's a bright blue sky and a sun for example or if it's night time and the sky is purple well <clears throat> we'll be able to compare the difference and see what different moods it evokes now it's up to you you can watch me and then make up your own landscape um, or you might want to draw the landscape with me but apply your own colour scheme or try different shapes and textures on top of your picture. That's up to you. Like I say, make something up. Um, and this was inspired a bit by David Hockney. So those of you that have been doing the art stars with us for a while will remember last year we did a session on David Hockney's landscapes. But if you can look his work up online, you, you'll get... I imagine you'll take quite a lot of inspiration from it. There's lots of very bright colours, um, contrasting colours, and they're just really vibrant, um, uplifting, happy, happy images, happy landscapes. But like I say, it depends on what you want to evoke, or if you want to create something that's a bit more eerie, you might have a red sky for a sunset, or... Um, or a black sky or a purple sky all sorts of possibilities here so it'll be quite interesting to see what you all come up with okay so i'm going to keep this one near me so i can copy it or take inspiration from it i might develop it a little bit as i go and i'm going to move my camera out so you can see Sorry, I'm just getting it so it's really clear. There we go. And what you're going to need is your paints. I'm going to use watercolours today. If you want to use something different to our colour, that's fine. Uh, watercolours are good because remember we can build up layers of colour. So as you go, we can put on one wash and then when it dries, layer up the same colour on top. Some paint brushes, some water, some clean water, and if you're using watercolours, it's a good idea to have some tissue or kitchen paper to hand, kitchen towel. Kitchen towel's good because um, if we make any smudges or splodges, it clears it up really quickly and easily, and tissue can stick a little bit, but obviously if you don't have kitchen roll, that's fine. Um, oh, and here's another one. This is a drawn landscape with lots of pattern on so I'm going to take inspiration from some of these textures I've put on here but do this as a painting instead of a shaded line drawing and I'm going to work landscape which is this way as I'm doing a landscape and as always just just test my line pressure so row of dark like this row of medium lines and then a row of super duper light pencil lines and we're not going to really be doing any shading today this is just like i say just to keep us in good habits while we're drawing there we go dark medium and light pop your paper onto the other side and like i say you are welcome to copy me or you might want to do something a little bit different might want to make up your own landscape which is less hilly or has more trees on it's up to you okay so I'm going to start by um, doing some hill shapes I'll make mine quite dark so you can see just do yours a little bit lighter in pencil so there's one coming off the side of the page um, Sally 
these circles. I'm going to fit quite a few in here, I think. Um, one up here. And the good thing I find, the good thing for me now, is now that I've already done a picture, I can see what worked, what didn't work as well, what I'd like to alter. Because there are certain things on my first picture where I think, you know, oh, the, I wanted to put some quite thick brush strokes on. And I did it on one of my back heels. But then remember, because remembering that because of perspective, as things are further away, they should look smaller. So maybe this time I'll do this on the front instead for example so there we go it's just quite simple i've just drawn some hills like this and i'm going to put some trees on remembering again perspective things up close are big things far away are small so if you want to put trees on the ones that are further to the front do them closer there we go so i'm doing a tree trunk and again as you'll have seen from my first picture with my style with what i want to create today i'm not aiming to create a realistic photo real landscape I want to give the impression of the different shapes and textures are there and use a very in my case a very vivid color palette and I the tree trunk I'm gonna do a curve like this there we go and I think I'll rub out some of these lines that are going through it from my other hills so I can't see those when I paint it there we go so there's my big tree I think I'll do a road as well I've done a road on my first picture so I'm going to do a curved line down like this and then another curved line so it's up close so it looks quite big and then as it goes into the distance it's going to get smaller and gradually come out like that some road markings on that and like I say you might want to do something completely different in which case I advise you start yours and just watch me as we go take inspiration maybe from a few things I do um, or if you want to do it with me you can do step by step so again further away things are small they're bigger as we get up close so these markings on the road are going to get bigger as we go forward This is um, quite a fun picture, like I say. The tree's quite small in proportion to the road and the road markings. That's fine. We want to remember not everything we create always has to be realistic. It can be um, a multitude of ways and a multitude of styles. And this is this is my style. This is how I work. So on the top of this hill here, I'm going to do a tree. I'm going to do like a um, cloud shape on top like that. And then some little trees in the distance. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this quite quickly so I can spend a bit longer on the, on the detail painting is going to be the main thing here and I'm going to do some bushes and trees in the background okay. some bushes there and then a little tree on top and like I say with yours you might want to do more or less trees more bushes more hills less hills it's up to you it's up to you okay and like I say from this first picture quite a moody sky quite bright colors I think you know reflecting on it now I've done it it looks very very busy maybe it would have been better to do more of a clear sky just in one color and then have the detail on the hills that's fine so I might do that now So I want to create less of a moody feel in this one. And as well, another important point about colours you might want to bear into consideration before you paint now are warm and cool colours. So warm colours like red and pink 
and ready purple shades these are what we call warm colors and when we look at them they can make us feel warm or hot or using them in large amount large quantities can give the impression of there being danger near or something being hot or um, maybe not being safe cool colors such as bluey greens blue shades um, uh, cool colours, so they might make us feel a bit cooler to look at them, might give us a feeling of something being cold. Um, so like I say, these 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 can create different moods, as you can see here, with all the red and the pink. So I've used the combination of both here, but mainly red, so like I say, it gives us that feeling of maybe something happening. being quite evocative so just bear these things in mind I'm going to do a blue sky this time I think so I think I'm going to go with quite a bright blue and I'm just going to paint um, normally remember if you want to make the, the sky or any area wet first you can do water painting your wet painting it's really good to apply your learning so for any of the previous sessions um, apply those techniques now like I say so wet painting dry painting marks and textures and remembering the first wash of color tends to be quite light but like I say we can go back over make that darker and more prominent if we wish to and also um, work over the top to create different lines and textures so I think in this one I'm, like I say I want to create something quite uplifting this time and bright maybe I will use more cool colors today And also bearing complementary colours in mind, so um, orange and blue. I'll use some a little bit of orange on here to complement the blue. Or yellow and purple. If you look on the internet, there are lots of images of landscapes which are done just using different shades of yellow and purple. Again, that's quite evocative, quite moody, having a purple sky or having a yellow sky. So another possibility would be just using water and wetting your sky the area for your sky then painting over the top with one color or a few colors maybe different shades of blue to um, to give the impression of the sky being moody the weather With that, that said, let's try that now. I'm going to use a bit of dark blue over the top. Now it's wet. So can you see I'm just dabbing dark blue over the top. It's giving us quite a... Um, moody feel and like I say with mine in particular I don't want the sky to be too busy because um, I want to make the hills and the, 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 the actual landscape the trees quite detailed and if there's too much detail it can detract attention away from the picture right 
up to the edges. It's a bit like a marbled surface, doesn't it? There we go. There we go. There's my sky. And I'm going to choose some colours for my hills. And like I said, my first picture was um, mainly warm colours with a few cool colours in there. So mainly reds and pinks. Um plus a little bit of blue and green so I want to make it mainly cooler colours maybe with a tiny bit of warm colours on there I want to mix some green I think I'm going to mix some green by mixing blue and uh, yellow together remember if you want to use your ready mix green at any point that's fine any ready mix colours but I really like with green when you're doing paintings of the outdoors so plants trees landscapes it um it I, it's better for creating more organic colors more of a khaki green if you mix your own so i've just put some water and some blue paint on my painting using that as a palette and i get some yellow And yeah, the more yellow I add, the brighter and lighter the green will be, the more blue, the, um, the darker, the more of a greyish green shade I'll have. I really like that shade of green. I'm going to paint a few of my hills using this. Remember when you're mixing colours as well, if you're... Um, putting water on your paint lid they'll be quite watery so you can either put several layers on of paint as they dry or this is good for painting over the top to create different marks and textures So I've got a green hill. There we go, and I might do another one as well, one of the smaller ones with that green, and just leave that to dry. And I'll come back to it at the end to add some more detail on, maybe using a finer brush and a different shade of green. now I want to use I want to use a little bit of orange because um, like I said I've used a lot of blue there blue and orange are complementary colors they'll look very good together so I'm gonna mix red and yellow the more red the more of a blood orange I'll have the more yellow the brighter it will be orange I'll do one here in orange and like I say these colors are quite watered down quite muted so I can work over the top and add patterns and textures some on the other side as well there we go 
and I think it might need some warm colours, slightly warm colours to lift it a little bit, the background, so maybe I'll get some nice yellows on there. But like I say, keeping it predominantly cool. And again, yellow, if you use a lot of yellow, yellow can make us feel happy. It can give us quite a joyful feeling of the sun, being there, of being outdoors. But huge amounts of yellow, so if, say, a room was painted completely in yellow, it can have the um, opposite effect as well. It can be too overpowering. So a bit of yellow's good just a bit just to make the picture pop or like I say if your sky was done in yellow it could be rather evocative And it's good to try and avoid having any white on your landscape. So if you can paint the whole picture, make it really colourful. And like I say, think about what mood you want to evoke. Is it going to be eerie and nighttime? Is it going to be quite moody? Or do you want it to be very bright and happy? Lots of outdoor colours like blues and greens. And I think I'm going to use a dark blue, like a navy blue, for this hill. Different blue, and that's another point as well. Use a different, different shades of colours. If you want to use the same colour again, like I've used blue in the sky, I'm going to do a blue hill. Don't use the same shade to do the hills or the detail on the landscape as you've done for the sky, because it might overwhelm the picture. It will be too much of the same colour, and you'll lose the emphasis and the focus of the main image, of the foreground image. Lots of things to bear into consideration when we're thinking about our colour choices when we're painting. Do some blue trees again. ones in dark blue and navy blue the ones in the distance and I'm going to use a green one I've mixed just one straight out of the paints this time so we've got some variation on these tree these hills in the background so you can use a combination of same colour that you've mixed, for example, if you've mixed a green plus one straight from the paint tin, straight from the palette, that's great. And this tree might do something a bit bright. I might use a nice bright pink for this one. Like I said, it's almost as more cool colours on this one than warm because I want to have a contrast between the two different pictures at the end, which we can look at. And lastly, this little tree in the road, and then we can come and add some textures on top. So for the road, 
I use the blue for my first picture. I might use, um, what shall I use? Maybe another nice green. Gray, turquoise, green shade. Like I say, watercolours are very good for what we're doing today because we can build up the layers of colour um, and add different textures on top. But if you want to use something else, if there's a different way of adding colour, you prefer different paints or crayons, that's absolutely fine. It's whatever you work best with or you think will um, work on your style work with your style. There we go. And I'm just getting quite aware of time now because I know you're I've been on for a little while and you guys are watching. So after I've painted this road, I'm just going to move straight into adding a little bit of texture to give you some ideas and that will give you a chance then just to carry on with yours. So what I'd normally do is, like I said, I want to avoid leaving any white on there so I paint these road markings maybe in a yellow or orange and paint that tree as well. So I might start by showing a little bit of um, some marks that are indicative of grass. So I'm going to choose a green you can use the green that you've mixed to do some, if you've mixed a green, you can use that some of that over the top or use a different shade. I'm gonna try a different shade and I'm gonna just do lots of little, I'm using a slightly smaller brush now, little brush markings like this, which look a bit like little footprints actually, just to give a feeling of the grass that's there. gently you can use different colors if you want or like I say it can be the same color again the exact same shade of green again that you've used to paint it over the top um, a different wash of color just to make it stand out so I'm showing that maybe there's some grass here Yeah, this is the thing really thinking about what would be on your landscape and how you can represent it as pattern as different patterns so is it long grass or haystacks dry land how would you show that I'm excited about seeing what you all produce for this because everyone's work is going to be so different we can really get a feel from it we'll really be able to learn a lot from different moods that you've all created judged on your color choice texture choices I think for this part of the hill the orange part I might use a red over the top let's try something different um, I'm going to do some lines which are going horizontally now, slightly thicker lines like this. See that really kind of makes the picture pop 
now. And we can see, the, like I said, the first wash of colours. This picture looks quite muted, but now I'm doing this. Now I'm adding these um, second layers over the top of these patterns. It's really making it pop out more, really making it jump out. remember as well if you want to take perspective into consideration with your picture you might want to make things smaller as they get into the background with these textures or bigger at the front if you wish there we go and I might I'd like to add a bit of texture to this big tree at the front so I'm going to use another red because the red's similar to the purple and do some large strokes like that and like I say this is really making it pop now and just on the yellow hills, I could use some orange or use some more yellow. I might do some more yellow, do the same shade just to show you. And do some, um, do some, let's try some, just some wavy lines down like that to show different paths, um, different textures. And can you see, although it's the same colour, it's still really, with a second layer, still really pops out at us. just very quickly this one at the back I'm just going to try doing some tiny little dots to represent wheat or grass just to give us a feel of something there and like I said I would paint the road markings in I'm just being aware of time and I don't want to keep you guys too long but try and um with yours if you can get any white covered up Whatever colours you go with, whatever feel you want to give it, just um, whatever feel you want to give your picture, just just get it full of colour. Try and avoid too much negative white space. There we go. And last of all, I might just do something on this hill here. Maybe use the same colour I've used for the road and yeah maybe just do some markings like this oh and another thing as well just very quickly if you want to make the picture the hill stand out Can go around them with that colour or sort of or do one side at a time like this so it adds to the dimension of the piece and makes it stand out there we go you can see from that one and you can do that with all of the colours you've used and it also hides helps to hide the pencil line underneath and like I say, it adds to the dimension and really makes it pop nicely. And yeah, when you've, like I say, when you've, you've done the patterns, you might want to um, continuing, continue layering up colour in the plain areas, like the tree trunks or any plain hills, just to make them really jump out. That's a great thing with watercolours. We can build up the layers of colour. But there we go. There's my second picture. So we can see... Almost the same image, but the different 
moods that can evoke if we use more cool colours in one and more warm colours in the other. Well, well done everybody. I hope that you've enjoyed today. I'm really excited about seeing what you come up with and I will see you very soon.